welcome to Facebook Live. This is Ann. This is our holiday edition. Uh, so happy holidays with whichever holiday that you celebrate. We are going to make a one pan dinner tonight because everybody's busy. With, with or without the holidays, this is a great dinner to make. Um, and there's lots of variations, which I'll talk about as we're going along. But I wanted to do this because our flavor of the month is our wild raspberry olive oil. The base of this is a pure extra virgin olive oil. The reason we love this, we have searched high and far to find this kind of quality of rosemary oil. The reason being is when you infuse a, an oil with an herb, usually you need to do it with a dried herb. And rosemary, for some reason, when it's infused into extra virgin olive oil, has kind of a woody taste. So um, our producer for this takes fresh wild rosemary, throws it right in the hopper with the olives, and presses them both together. So you have this incredibly fresh tasting rosemary olive oil. Definitely pick some up. You're going to want to use it for all kinds of cooking. The other product that we're using today is our Sherry Reserva. I've talked to you about this before. It is cask aged for about 25 years. It's amazing. It's a pungent vinegar, but it's got great depth. Love it. Those are the two we're going to use. And pinned the recipe. Thank you. Oh, Becky's here. Forgot to say that. Becky has pinned the recipe so you can follow along. And I said there's going to be some variations here because any winter vegetables that you have will, will work. Um, I'm going to start with potatoes. And I did some little tiny potatoes, which I'm going to cut just in half and toss into the bowl. I also did carrots. So the key to roasting well is to make everything just about the same size. So the back end of the carrot, I'm going to cut into fourths lengthwise and then just in half. So if I look at that, um, it's about the same as the potato. And that makes everything roast about the same. Um, this end of it is kind of narrow. So I'm only going to cut it in half. And that's plenty thick. I also did some sweet potatoes. I had one sweet potato left over from Thanksgiving, so I chopped that up. I did a um, couple, it's about a half of an onion, and again, I did it into uh, nice chunks. I also happened to have a couple of um, stalks of uh, broccoli and cauliflower, so I did the same thing, about the same size. That's all going to go in the bowl. So if you have Brussels sprouts, um, asparagus, though that's not a winter vegetable, but if you're doing it in the summertime, that's also nice. It's nice that it's available year-round, but summertime fresh vegetables, of course, make a big difference. But um, these are wonderful winter vegetables, and they are available. So it's a nice little medley, beautiful looking. I also have a nice big hunk of kale. I've done just a real rough chop. You want to keep it kind of big because as these roast, we want it to be crispy like little chips, and that's going to be on the top. So I'm going to set this aside, and we're going to start. I have a half of a cup of the rosemary olive oil, though I'm not going to use the whole thing. I'm going to divide that. And I have three tablespoons of the sherry reserva. We're going to use these um, together on separately and together um, throughout this recipe. So first thing is, I'm going to take just about two tablespoons. You don't need a whole lot. On the vegetable side, I do about a pound of the potatoes. So the mixture between the um, little new potatoes and the sweet potato is about a pound. And then a pound of other vegetables mixed up, whatever it is. And that is in um, ratio to a pound of sausage. So if you're going to double that, you're going to do extra vegetables, you can do that. So the olive oil went on. I have a nice big tossing bowl. I have a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper. And that is also going to go on. And now I'm just going to toss. And as you can see, it doesn't take a lot of oil. This is why I don't toss it on the pan, because you tend to use too much oil. You don't need gobs and gobs of oil. The flavors of our oil are big, so we want to use less. And then it also brings out the flavor of the vegetables that you're putting 
with the oil as opposed to covering up the flavor of the vegetables. Now, I always say if there's a pool at the bottom after you've made a vinaigrette or roasted vegetables, um, toss them. Mm, too much oil. So you can see they have a nice little sheen, which means they're coated. Sweet potatoes need a little more. There we go. That looks good. Easy peasy. The salt, the pepper, the oil. So about two tablespoons, so I have the, the rest left to make our uh, vinaigrette. That is going to go on my pan that I have covered in foil for very easy cleanup. And there it is. Nice and beautiful. It is in one layer. You don't want so much that you're um, piling it up on each other because then you're going to steam the lower vegetables and you want these to roast nice. So, I've got, I've got the uh, oil and vinegar, excuse me, the oil, salt and pepper on the vegetables. I have cut one pound. These were little sausage links. This is a um, garlic sausage that I got from our local grocer, which I really like. You can use anything, mild Italian, hot Italian. Um, <clears throat> you can do um, smoked sausage if you'd like. And now I am just going to nestle these pieces in between the vegetables. Easy, one pan, I love it. If you want to mix this up, I need to wash my hands, hang on just a second. If you want to mix this up, this also works with pieces of salmon, really nice. Um, do the same thing, just nestle them in there. With the salmon though, before you cut it into the chunks to uh, nestle it in, I would um, brush that with a little bit of that olive oil so it has a nice little coating. Or you can nestle a couple of pieces and that, don't chop it quite so small, right in between. And then you can cut it after um, everything is roasted. So there it goes. It's gonna go into the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Make sure that your sausage is nicely browned. Your, um, the vegetables should be barely fork tender because they're gonna roast a second time once you put the kale on. Let me wash my hands and we're gonna get that in the oven. Okay, all set to go. It's going in the oven. Um, in 20 minutes, I will not take it out of the oven. I'm going to sprinkle the kale that we're going to prepare in just a minute here on the top. It goes back in the oven for another five minutes or so. You want that kale to be crispy and charred right over the top of it. It's gorgeous. So in it's going. But you don't want to wait for 25 minutes for that to get done. I'm going to show you the finished product, but the next step, oh, don't get rid of your bowl. The next step is the kale. So that same bowl that you had um, tossed the vegetables in, set that aside because we're going to use it. You could do this in two ways. You could prepare that vinaigrette in here, whisk it up, and then pour off everything but two tablespoons, but that gets a little messy for me. And since I have my handy dandy fabulous, this is my favorite thing in the world, it's Christmas, if you don't have one yet, send everybody the olive scene, you're going to want one of these. We're going to create the vinaigrette. Once we make the vinaigrette, a couple tablespoons is going to go on the kale, and the rest then is ready for you to serve alongside of the finished dish. So, just like any other vinaigrette that we do, we always start with the vinegar, so three tablespoons of the Sherry Reserva. Incredible, incredible um, um, smell. It just smells wonderful. That cask aging and um, how, how rich it is is really, really good. It's not a balsamic vinegar, so it is not sweet. It is uh, sharp and pungent, which is great. goes along with everything here really well. Then we're going to put in, the oil does not go in yet, we're going to put in a teaspoon of um, Dijon mustard, which is that surfactant that's going to, or an emulsifier as you call it, it's going to hold the oil and vinegar together so it becomes um, really nicely blended. We're going to put in about a teaspoon of honey. Honey is actually also an emulsifier. 
but it also brings out the flavor of that vinegar. And again, a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper. There's no oil in this yet. This is why I love this pitcher. It whisks up so quickly, and because of this neck, it doesn't come splattering out of you. Okay, so any herbs, any salt, any seasoning always goes in with the vinegar. It softens it. It gets that uh, flavor coming out and together, and now the oil goes in. And with any oil, and this has a nice strong bottom, I can whisk while I'm pouring, which is also nice. Reminder for anybody that's just joining, the recipe is pinned. And this is our one pan winter vegetable uh, roasted sausage. Okay. So we're all mixed up. So I have this great vinaigrette that I can serve alongside the finished meal. If anything's left over, you can have it the next day on your salad. Same thing. Do not overdress anything. You don't need to. So the kale is going to go into the same bowl that we had. I'm going to drizzle in about a tablespoon or two, no more than that. And now I'm just going to massage the kale. If you like doing a raw kale salad, this is a good thing to do before you add anything else. You want the uh, vinegar to sit on the kale. It softens the stems. Even though I removed most of the stems, you still have the, um, the main pieces of stem that run down that kale. And this helps soften it. This gets it ready to roast really nicely. Okay, so it's, it's uh, all coated, which is wonderful. We're going to let that sit. So we have 20 minutes on the sausage and vegetables. Could be up to 25, even 30 minutes, depending on how hot your oven is. It should be at 425. If your oven runs a little bit cool, put it at 450. We want this to really roast fast. Um, again, the sausage should be nicely browned. And then just open the oven, pull out your uh, tray, toss the kale over the whole thing. It goes back into three to five minutes, so it's nicely charred and roasted. And let me show you the finished product. It is right here. What's really fun in um, when you're having a nice group of people over. So this is crispy and charred. I don't know if you can hear that. It's nice and crisp. We have the, um, the potatoes. It smells incredible. Yeah, it really does. The <laughs> potatoes are tender. The sausage is browned. So you can serve it just like this. It's really fun. It's, it's very uh, country style and uh, rustic. Or you can put the whole thing into, obviously, a serving bowl. But we like putting this right in the middle of the table. You have crusty bread to go with it. Ooh, that's hot. And it is, it's delicious. So uh, enjoy. Use up all those wonderful seasonal roasted vegetables, seasonal vegetables to make it. Anything that you like. You can use squash. You can use um, butternut squash. is wonderful with this. You can do chunks of spaghetti squash, even though that's kind of hard to cut. But it is wonderful with it. Um, any of the root vegetables, uh, parsnips, um, it is delicious. Change it up between sausage, salmon. You can do chicken pieces with chicken. You do have to roast it a little bit longer. And if you have an instant read thermometer, that's the best way to test on that doneness. Kev says it looks amazing. Thank you, Kevin, for joining us. If you have any questions, you can forward them through the email, through a Facebook message, and we'll get back to you. Uh, give it a try. Let us know how you love it. Don't forget the rosemary oil. And stop in at the olive seam. You're going to want a Christmas gift. This gets served alongside. You can drizzle a little more of the vinaigrette over the top. This is not the only thing we have at the olive seam, though. We have lots of gifts, including a lot of ready-to-go gifts that are packaged and ready for you to pick up. Uh, one of my favorites, Dinner on Me. Give it to somebody that you love. Perfect dinner for them. It has everything in there for a nice dinner. Another great gift, our winter warm-up. Loving these soups. They're done really well. Um, great gifts, ready to go at the olive scene. And our recipes, remember our oils are interchangeable. So if you have another oil at home that you love, this dish would be wonderful with chipotle oil. It'd be great with herbs to Provence. So switch up the oil, get a whole new flavor. 
And uh, join us next month for our Facebook Live. Thanks for joining us. Happy holidays.